All right. Welcome, everyone, to this uh, GO3 video practice judging session. I uh, hope that everyone had time to have a look at the videos that I sent on Tuesday. Um, before we start, just a few housekeeping things. Uh, first of all, like all the other sessions, this session is recorded. Uh, so you will be able to access it later on on the GBC uh, YouTube page. Also, please make sure that you do stay on mute throughout the whole session. And if possible, if you can adjust your screen name to your actual name, uh, we are trying to keep track for CPE for you judges. Uh, so it'll help the process quite a bit if it's your actual name on the screen uh, rather than a nickname or something else. Uh, so today the process will be that I will go through each of the routines. I will show the routine even though you've had a look, hopefully. And then uh, I'll put up the scripting right away that uh, Caitlin, Ellis, and I um, made together. So thank you very much to Caitlin. I don't think she'll be able to join us today, but uh, she did help with that process. Uh, go through the scripting and then see if there are any questions. If you do have a question about a particular routine or rule or anything like that, please put it in the group chat so everyone can see it. Write in question in all capitals and then your question just so I can um, manage that and have a, and know basically when there is a question. Um, now, I know that ideally when we're looking at routines and scripting, I'd be able to play the video and talk about it as it's happening so we can each have a look at say things like text or different deductions. Um, unfortunately, just from the feedback that I've received, it seems that when we're playing videos through Zoom, it just keeps skipping and it's not really um, conducive to that. So that's why I sent them in advance. And for all of our video practice judging sessions, um, I think that will be the process moving forward. But if you do have any suggestions or comments on how the session's running or is run, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. Uh, by email would be the best way at mpomagara at jimbc.org. And I'll put that in the chat right now for everyone. All right, so I'll start sharing my screen now so we can um, have a look at the first vote. Oh, here she is. All right, so for this vault, um, for the run and board contact, we, uh, as a panel, again, this is really just Caitlin and I's opinion together, so it's not necessarily the right or wrong answer. <laughs> um, we felt that she had some troubles maintaining speed and that she had the excessive lean on the board. Now that caused her in the first flight to have quite a heavy pike. And then just a little note here, remembering that in the compulsory, that pike deduction is up to five, which is quite different than in the optional level. A little bit of legs apart in the support phase, we had some shoulder angle and then a little bit of the inverted vertical position where she never really showed us a proper up and down vertical handstand that she's supposed to. Um, that's that deduction that's up to 2.0 and would be using the full 2.0, she was doing say like a full dive roll. Then we have in the post handstand phase, a little bit of legs apart, but overall it's a fairly nice form other than that big pike in the beginning. We did have a little bit of dynamics. Um, oh, <laughs> I can't see it here, perfect. With a, uh, of course, the start value is always 10 in compulsory and for a final of 8.8. .8. Um, we were looking to come up with ranges, but we just agreed completely on this one. So I see there's nothing in the chat, so I will move on to the second vault.
So that was a pretty good example of that rolling action I was just mentioning in the mentioning, pardon me, in the previous fault. Uh, so for her, she did maintain her speed a little bit better than the previous girl, but she still had some lean on the board. A little bit of pike in the first flight, but she was actually kind of surprisingly straight when we were looking at this in uh, slow motion. However, in the support phase, we definitely had a large shoulder angle and then that uh, inverted vertical position was almost never shown. A little bit of foot form. And then in the post handstand phase, um, because she did that almost rolling action, uh, we did take the point three for the knees bent as she's supposed to be completely straight. However, I didn't take in addition a pike, even though she did have closed hips, because I felt like we were already taking that deduction by taking the inverted vertical position, and it felt like it was too much of a double whammy. Whereas this athlete could have done the exact same vault and the same rolling with the closed hip, but with knees straight. So to make that difference there, that's why we took the knees bent, but not the um, additional hip there in the post handstand phase. And then for the uh, landing phase and the overall, of course, in dynamics. And then the athlete, after she rolled, she stood up completely and she never showed us that straight lying position on the back. So that's a full point deduction. Uh, so that if you're a little bit different than us, then that might be where some of the difference is. Um, we ended up with deductions in the four to 4.25. So for a final of five, seven, five to six. Again, I see no questions in the chat, so I'll move on to the next one. Uh, if you feel like the pace is uh, too fast, also do let me know in the chat, please. And here's our third and final vault. All right, so for this athlete, uh, we had acceleration uh, more than maintaining the speed as she didn't slow down too much in front of the board, but her speed never actually increased uh, as much as we wanted to uh, during the run. We still had the excessive lean on the board. In the first flight, uh, quite a large pike with the legs apart and the head alignment. She definitely had the head really um, out. <laughs> In the support phase, we have some shoulder angle, a little bit of that inverted vertical position missing, the head alignment again, legs apart and arms bent. The post handstand, a little bit of legs apart, a little bit of the head, and then the dynamics. And just wanna point out here again, there are several deductions uh, like the head, uh, the legs apart or the knees bent that we can take in different parts of the vault. Um, I think that sometimes that's something that coaches tend to forget and that might make it quite a big difference at the, in the final score. Uh, so for this athlete, we ended up in deductions around the 155218 for a final of uh, 82845, so some, somewhere in the low eights. Still no questions I see. So let's have a little bit more fun here with bars. Or it's more fun for me anyways, my favorite. <laughs> and here we go. So until the landing, there's pretty good routine overall, I'd say. Here we are. Uh, so on the uh, glide swing, a little bit of feet. Some of us wanted to take a little bit on the knees. Uh, on the pullover part, we had a bit of body position. Um, of course, we understand that there will be, you know, a little bit of a bend in the hip happening, but it doesn't need to be that big of a bend. We 
ideally we'd like to see a really kind of straight hollow or curvilinear flexion throughout the whole pullover if we're really being um, idealistic. <laughs> And then in the front hip circle, two small casts. Uh, so you can see here on the scripting, we kind of separated those just to make sure that we weren't missing the small cast part of it. A little bit of rhythm there, the body posture in the front hip circle, then of course the arms bending, especially towards the end. And the cast, a little bit of body posture there. She wasn't quite straight and tight, a little bit of legs and feet. On the cast squat through, just a little bit of the uh, foot flexion happening. And then the, she showed us a nice clear support in the beginning and at the end of the stride circle, just a little bit of loose knees there. And then the cutback, she kind of schlumps. That's not a good word, but she kind of didn't maintain a fully straight line as she was uh, moving the leg back. A uh, little bit of amplitude there as well little bit of legs apart on the next cast back hip circle again that body position and then the dismount where she unfortunately incurred the most amount of deductions we had a bit of body posture so the amplitude uh how high and big she went basically a little bit of length the legs apart and then the three steps on landing now in this case we did not take that squat even though at the end of the third step she ended up in a squat. Uh, the squat on landing there should really be taking kind of that first landing position uh, if it were to happen. And then with the dynamics throughout, ended up um, again in the low eights, so again, uh, between what, pardon me, between eight, one, five, and eight, four. Um, I saw here something in the chat. I see that Carol's not seeing the short hand on the screen. Is everyone else seeing the short hand? Not seeing the short hand. No short hand. Ah. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Why is it not sharing properly? Can we see it now? Okay, I see some thumbs ups and some yeses. Ah, well, that will make it a little bit harder. Let me just quickly go back to the vaults. Shorthand, so that was the first vault. Just if you wanna kind of compare. Second vault. The third vault. And going back to our bars. <laughs> So this is the routine that we just uh, looked at. So Jenny and Nikki are the ones that I see the most here on my screen that pop up. So if I ask questions, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up or down, I'd appreciate it. Um, are we good with this routine? We can move on to the next one to the scripting. Awesome. Okay, and I do see a question, if we could get the shorthand sent out. Um, I can, and the other way that you could have access uh, to it is that the session will be posted, so it will be in there as well, on the uh, GBC YouTube page. Well, now I am hoping that, oh, Adriana or Alexis, the squat, yes. Ah, repeat the squat. Okay. 
Uh, so what I was talking about the deep squat. So this athlete, when she lands, she takes three steps backwards and ends up quite low in the hips. She's very um, basically in a deep squat position. But the reason why we didn't take the deep squat deduction on her, that up to three tenths, is because she, the deep squat deduction is taken during, at that first landing position. So if she had originally landed with the hips lower than the knees, then we could have taken a deep squat deduction in addition to the steps. We'll move on to the second uh, bar routine. I think I figured out the screen share here moving different between different places. So hopefully that works. Okay, so here is the scripting for this routine. Uh, so she did have everything that she needed. We did not have any deductions on the first couple of skills until the front hip circle with a little bit of arms. Uh, she had exceptional amplitude throughout the routine, much more than what we would be looking for for an average athlete of this level. So that was really nice. On the cast squat through, just a little bit of the knees, potentially a little bit of feet. She's one of those athletes where you could see that the body posture is very tight. And it seems like even when she's really trying to straighten her legs, there's kind of always that little bump in the knee. And that's just, unfortunately, something that we, that kind of breaks the line a little bit, but it seems like she's trying to keep them quite straight still. And then in the uh, stride circle at the very beginning, she does go into a clear support position, which doesn't really quite, you know, hold it or show it very clearly. So we took a little bit of a deduction there where she's kind of falling right into the circle. I would have liked to see it just there for just a moment longer. And then the cutback, cast, back hip circle, no deductions. We did have the head really going, doing that head back kind of motion for that full tent, and then a little bit of body posture in the um, uh, dismount for a very high final score of somewhere in the 9.6 to 9.7 for us. Uh, this would be probably a winning routine at this level. Very, very nice. Um, now there is a comment about going quickly through the videos. Um, is, was this one a little bit better, Sabrina? Okay. Uh, so there's a comment from Gabby about having a little bit more deduction on the both casts for assuming that means bent arms. Um, I mean, yeah, that's probably fine. We're able to be different and see different things. Um, when we were reviewing the video, we felt like the slight arm bends that were, slight arm bend that were there were allowable. But if you had a little bit deduction, that's totally fine. As a panel, um, in these kind of high scores, so the nine five plus as an average, we're allowed to be two tenths apart. So um, on this one, on average, uh, Caitlin and I would have been at 9.65. So someone could easily be in 9.5, 9.45, and it would be fine. All right. Moving on to the next bar routine.
Here we go. Okay, so this is the routine that probably had a lot of people questioning uh, whether we had picked the routine correctly or not. Uh, yes, it was on purpose. We find that oftentimes in uh, judging courses, we get a lot of routines that are kind of, that don't have any issues with them. So it makes it a bit harder to practice what to do when there are issues. Um, so this is what we end up having to do with this one. So first of all, she was missing her glide swing at the top of the routine. Now, when there is uh, something, a major element that is omitted, remember that we do have to take double the value of that element as a deduction. So in your uneven bars uh, table, you can see that the glide swing return is worth 0.2. So that's why we have the 0.4 uh, omitted at the top here. Uh, then for the uh, pullover, we had a little bit of legs. Now we were missing the front hip circle uh, small cast, so that's worth 0.4. So we had the full 0.8 as a deduction, again, double the value. Uh, then we had a cast to back hip circle with deductions. Uh, now, that's not supposed to be the routine, but this is what she's doing. So we still have to take execution deductions, right? Then we had the cast single leg squat through uh, that was omitted. So that's another 0.4. Then she does basically a cut forward that we still have to take deductions on, even though it's not in the routine. The stride circle, thankfully, she had. Uh, we just had a bit of knees and the rhythm on this one for deductions. Then she had a cut back. Uh, again, a little bit of feet there and then a bit of amplitude and the rhythm. She's kind of stopping there for a little bit too long afterwards. And then the next skills that she's supposed to do are the cast and the back hip circle. But unfortunately, she's not doing them there. Even though she did it before, we can't go and use skills from before to fill this hole. So we, again, have to take double the value for each. So 0.8 for the cast missing and 0.8 for the back hip circle. And then now the dismount is supposed to be an underswing dismount. But we felt like a cast squat on underswing dismount was very similar. So we called it changing the element instead of substituting or omitting which means that we took the full value of the element rather than taking double the value of the element. Uh, plus at this point, she's uh, not scoring very, very high. So trying to not be as, um, you know, just trying to be accurate, but not overly over, overzealous. Uh, we definitely had a bit of dynamics. So we have to not forget that this is a deduction that we're still taking um, as a throughout, right? And for a final, somewhere around a five, five, two for her. Uh, there's a question in the chat that was sent privately. Can you call the back hip circle a change for the front hip circle? Uh, I understand why wanting to, because the name is very similar, but to me, not at all. Like we're really not doing the same element. The direction is different, the technique is different. Um, to me, that's a, a strong no, and to Caitlin as well, that's uh, yeah, something that we agreed on for that. Okay. So with that, we are moving on to BEAM. Um, and now that we are looking at uh, events that will include text, 
Um, I'm sorry again with this video sharing, it's really difficult to go and ideally I'd like to play the video and be like, okay, here are the text, the arms, the blah, blah, blah. But in the scripting, it was a little bit too much to start writing every single little thing uh, in there. So instead we just put T's wherever we saw text errors, um, which is basically what we would be doing uh, in a real routine, in a real judging situation. Okay, so here's beam number Okay. So this is the first routine. Uh, we had our mount to start with. There were a little bit of text here. And then uh, quite a nice handstand. Uh, we had potentially a tiny little bit of the lever out. She had a slight hike in the hip when she was coming down. Tiny bit of text again. Uh, the rond de jambe. The uh, leg is fairly even throughout and then at the very end she completely goes down. So that's why we felt like we had to take that full deduction. Um, if she had just been a little bit more precise and kept it all the way around then and paused for you know, really just marking the position and then lowered her leg before lifting to the scale, then we wouldn't have taken the deduction. Then for her straight legged leap, uh, a tiny little bit of height, potentially a little bit on the knees. Uh, slight text there is there with the arms. Then a little bit of height on just the first one. That's why it says uh, height one. <laughs> The pivot turns were nice and sharp, just could have used a tiny little bit more relevé in each of them. Then the half turn on one foot, uh, again, nice and precise, just a little bit of relevé missing. Then we had a slight text error before the dismount, a little bit of lever in, and then uh, slight legs. We, for artistry, uh, we do, uh, remember we do have up to 0.3, one and a half for the expression and one and a half for quality of movement. Uh, we felt like the quality of movement was quite nice throughout this routine, uh, but expression could have had just a little bit more. And then for the text throughout, we do have that up to 0.4. And even though we have text written down a couple of times there, I felt like that was really just a 05 out of four. Um, Emily is asking about clarifying the first two text deductions. Um, I don't remember not, right now, we would have to go back through the video. Um, and I think that for me anyways, the way that works the best to really, um, when I'm doing video judging, especially for compulsory, to really, really look at the text and see what's exactly correct or not, is um, if you have the app, and you go into uh, the level three beam routine, there is that scrolling um, illustration of what everything is supposed to look like. And it's, I find it really, really helpful. And you're really able to see, oh, at this point, the arms are supposed to be down. At this point, they're supposed to be up. At this point, they're supposed to supplely move this way or this or that. Um, and you're really able to look at kind of point by point what is the correct way because as we all know the videos that are provided to us in the uh, app are not actually perfect unfortunately <laughs> uh, 
Um, and then there was another comment about the lever or lever to the handstand. Um, yeah, we had only taken a potentially a 05 on the out, so the in, we felt that it was good enough. Okay. Um, I think I didn't mention the final score, but you can see it there. We were somewhere in the low to uh, mid nines. A very, very nice routine overall. Okay, I'll look at the beam number two. Okay. And balance beam number two, here we are. Uh, so we had the mount. Then again, a little bit of text in the beginning. She's um, in that kind of, uh, the first arm circle is a little bit awkward. And then when she's standing up, that um, arm little bit is slightly incorrect. And then in the handstand, definitely missing some vertical there. She's not quite actually reaching the handstand. A little bit for the lever, the body position, and potentially a little bit on the knees. And the rond de jambe, you could potentially have just a little bit of deduction on uh, the maintaining that leg throughout. For the straight-legged leap, we wanted a tiny little bit more split. Now remember that this, this particular level, we're only needing 90 degrees. So it's quite a bit less than what uh, the ideal 180 would be. Uh, so we're only really looking at how far from the 90 degrees she was. So in this case, we decided it was around the 0 0.05. A bit of body posture as she's a bit bent forward and then a little bit on the knee going into it. Uh, then she did a little bit of the wrong arms going into the straight jumps. And then throughout the straight jumps, she's actually using the wrong arm pathway as well. The straight jump, a uh, little bit of height, potentially a bit of body position. In the pivot turns, uh, again, we'd like to see a little bit more relevant in each of them, and then potentially a little bit more precision as well to really make them clear and sharp exactly half turns. Then in the half a turn on one foot, we'd like to see a bit more releve and a bit more precision. And then um, we had no deduction on the dismount. For the artistry, again, a little bit of expression. And then uh, in this case, a little bit of the quality of movement. Throughout, just an 05 on the text, a little bit of sureness and a little bit of footwork. And we're ending up somewhere in that 8, 8, uh, 9, 0, 5, 9, 1 kind of range. So basically around a 9. Looks like there's no comments for now and we're agreement on this one. So we'll move on to the third and final balance beam routine.
So a little bit more to write for that routine. There we go. Uh, so no deduction on the mouth, but then she had a little bit of exters uh, with again the arm circle and then coming up and a bit of a wobble there as well. And the handstand, some vertical missing, lever, body posture, knees and feet. And then um, with the uh, step back, sidewards kind of pose and then back again, some text error there. Uh, focus at level two is actually supposed to remain forward, and in this case, she looked sideways. In the rond de jambe, you can hopefully definitely see that the leg at the back really went down, so it wasn't maintained all the way around. And then we had a bit of knee and foot form as well. The straight legged leap, uh, the split was lacking, definitely the body posture overall. Uh, not only was she bent forward, but her arms were also in a of a random position and not precise as to where they should be in a leap like that. We also had knees, feet, and uh, some height missing. Again, a little bit of problem with the arm pathway there going into the straight jumps, and then a bit of rhythm there because she kind of is wobbling in between the two, uh, and then the height, and then the actual wobble afterwards. Then for the pivot turns, we'd be still looking for a bit more releve. Uh, she had a bit of wobble and definitely not very precise and sharp. Then a little bit of text deduction there, if I remember correctly, that one was also an arm pathway issue. Then we have the half a turn on one foot, uh, deduction for releve, the body posture, as well as the precision. And then she kind of missed doing the proper arm pathway going into that fish pose before into the dismount. So that's another text uh, issue there. And then for the dismount, uh, feet, legs, body posture. Now in artistry for her, we definitely took a little bit more. So a 10 for expression, a 10 for quality. Um, again, this is uh, just 0.2 out of the maximum 0.3. So there could still be more deductions taken if you wanted to. And that throughout on her out of the point four for text, we did a point one. And then sureness as well as footwork. There's many parts of the routine where she's um, definitely not using her footwork properly. She's not stepping ball of the foot first. Uh, she's not in high releve when she's supposed to be, all of that. And then we should be ending up somewhere in the mid to high sevens. Okay. And I see no comments again, so time for floor. Now I do have the sound on for the floor routine, so I hope that that comes through. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm sure we all know this music very well. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> very excited parents. They're very loudly if you uh, could hear the sound or when you watched it on your own. And here she is. Uh, so there is a little bit of text in the beginning, just remembering that those arms at the very beginning, they're supposed to move supply from the elbow. And we see really a lot of gymnasts that are kind of just doing it this way rather than moving supply up with the elbow. 
uh, for the split jump. Again, she's only requiring 90 degrees at this level, so we just had a little bit of height missing. And then the straight jump, a little bit of height as well, possibly a bit of body posture. Uh, there was a bit of text there. And then she goes into the um, handstand to bridge kickover, had a bit of feet, knees, and then the, oh, it says level there, it should say lever. Pardon me. Um, I think if someone was to stay also hitting the vertical properly uh, before going down to bridge, that deduction, if they had taken that, they would be definitely justified uh, here. Then there was a little bit of uh, issue with the arm pathway and the uh, focus and that the, the, the portion. Then we had the handstand forward roll, a bit of the arms that bent there and the body posture in the handstand mostly. The straight legged leap, possibly a little bit of height. And then the back roll to push up position, a little bit of arms, feet, the legs. And I see feet are written down twice here. What's happening with this scripting? <laughs> um, she also was kind of looked like she might have been a little bit sideways in the direction, um, but it's so hard to tell on a video like this sometimes, so we didn't take it. Um, and I guess that's a good time to just remind ourselves that when we're judging on video, we can only see the gymnast, you know, as big as our screen is, whereas in real life, they're human size, so it makes it a lot easier to see all kinds of things like direction in this case. Uh, then we had a little bit of text with the uh, positions going into the split on the floor. Uh, again, a little bit of text there where she is going down to her stomach. She's not quite doing it the right way. And then for the half a turn, we had a little bit of body posture and then possibly a bit of releve. Um, again, a tiny bit of text when she's finishing the full turn in the way that she's stepping out of it into the round off back handspring. And then the round off back handspring, um, definitely some form issues throughout there, as you can see. And then not forgetting that deduction of up to 0.24, um, not generating enough acceleration. So this one definitely could have used a little bit more. And then at the end here, there is a little bit of text issue and she didn't quite finish uh, properly with the music. Uh, so for her, we had a bit of expression, possibly some quality of movement, and then some text, tiny bit of footwork, a uh, tiny bit of body posture throughout. And uh, we'd be ending up here in a low eight, so eight to eight four. Oh, I saw there was something in the chat. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, Oksana, if I understand the question. Um, could you play next, please explain what text did you count for her? Um, we did take the 0.1 to 0.15 throughout in text, so I'm not sure if that was the answer to the question. Um, and again, we can see here in the scripting uh, all the little bits where the text was a little bit wrong. Okay, I'm not seeing any follow up just yet, so we'll move on to the next floor routine.
Okay. Unfortunately, our little gymnast forgot a little part of the routine there. And it's too bad, because otherwise that's a really nice routine. Uh, just before we look at the text, I noticed something in the chat here. Okay, so there was just a couple of um, private questions that were sent to me. Uh, so one of them had to do with the, can you mention what is the expected score for JO3? Um, I'm not 100% sure what that means, unfortunately, sorry. Uh, what I think maybe you're kind of seeing is what an average or a normal kind of score would be. And um, really for the compulsory, we're looking at, we're kind of saying that about of nine, so that, you know, eight, seven to nine, two-ish kind of range is a pretty average routine um, that didn't have any major issues or maybe a really, really nice routine with a smaller major issue. Uh, so somewhere around the uh, nine for uh, compulsories is supposed to be kind of the average. Um, and then we had another private question here regarding the scores that we have here being very different than some of the scores we see online. Um, I, I don't know, it's hard for me to explain this one because when I take uh, judging courses from the States and in the States, I end up with very similar scores and there's no issues. But when I'm looking at routines on YouTube, I do often find that the scores posted are a lot higher. Um, so I'm not too sure kind of where that disconnect is, um, but I think it's important to kind of remember that even if the scores might feel a little bit different, we're doing everything that we can in the province and in the country really to be as consistent as possible. And to also make sure that um, the ranking is as correct as possible. That's unfortunately all I can really say about that. Um, all right, so let's have a look at the scripting for routine number two that we watched. Uh, so for her, she had a really uh, obvious little text there in the beginning where she uh, does arm, arm, and then the first leg that goes up is the wrong one, actually. So whichever arm was the second one that moved, then it's that side's leg that should go up first. And then a nice split jump, the straight jump, a little bit of height missing. Uh, again, a tiny little bit of text there. Don't remember that one, unfortunately, I'm sorry. That handstand to bridge back kickover though is really, really nice. Um, I'd like to see it that precise like that a bit more often. Um, after that, it's that little quick kind of three pose a little bit and um, in the middle one she did she kept her focus basically all the way forward and the middle one she's supposed to have the focus downward so it's very small text error there handstand forward roll very nice the straight legged leap a bit of height a bit of uneven leg separation uh, possibly a bit on the knees and then uh, again, a little bit of arm pathway text error going into the back roll, but the back roll itself was very nice. Uh, then she does a funny kind of arm circle thing going into her three kind of poses going down into the split. Um, so that's the text error there. And then a bit of body posture in the split when she's uh, bent forward. Then when she gets up, she is uh, going to receive that 0.1 text deduction. And that's the one that's basically omitting a part of the routine that doesn't contain the major elements, that whole kind of little bit that she's missing. But then she also missed doing her half a turn on one foot. So then we're going to have to take double the value of the element uh, for not having it there. And then the round off back handspring. Uh, pretty nice, just could have had a slight bit more acceleration to really kind of show that speed and power that looked like it could go into tumbling afterwards. And then uh, she did have her nice uh, rebound, but then she had a little hop afterwards as well. So we did have to take that deduction. And then going down into her final poses, she did not finish quite with the music. 
Uh, for artistry, we just took the tiny little bit on expression. She was quite nice throughout, uh, but then we did take uh, one for the text throughout at the end as well. Uh, ending up uh, around a nine. And there. We'll have a look at our last routine. Okay. And here we go. Here's the scripting. Uh, so we had a little bit of text in the beginning, again, with those arms. And then the split jump, she's landing with her feet quite apart there. So this little old five, and then potentially you could have taken a little bit of height in the straight jump. Um, now, out of the straight jump, she rebounds into that pose, where at this level, she's really just supposed to step into that pose. So that's why that text there is there. For the handstand bridge back kickover, we had some knees uh, there throughout, and then a little bit of feet. Um, okay. Then we had the straight legged leap with a bit of height and feet. Uh, she had a bit of text there again. That was her arm pathway going into the back row to push up. Some legs apart, a bit of feet, body posture, possibly arms in the back roll. And then again, going to the split, a little bit of precision with the text there with those three poses going in. I find that that's really often a place where the athletes have trouble being precise with the, the dance. Uh, the split on the floor, we didn't take any deductions. And then again, she's not quite precise with her poses getting up into the half turn. Uh, she never is really fully down with the face facing, with the face um, down. And then when she's on that knee pose, she doesn't fully complete it as well before getting up. So a couple of text issues there. The half turn on one foot, a bit of body posture, a bit of releve. And then again, the uh, little bit of text stepping into the round off at spring. Uh, round the back handspring, a little bit of form, tiny little bit of acceleration, and uh, a little bit of text at the end. So for artistry, 05 on her for expression. And then for throughout, we had a one in text. And then we had 05 for body posture. Just in general, it seemed, um, even through the dance, a bit hard for her to uh, have clear body posture and straight legs and all of that. And we're still ending up uh, with a pretty good slash average score of that 895 to 91. I do have a question here. Is it a deduction for the extra hop instead of stretch to releve? Um, I think, I'm, I mean, I'm not exactly sure where, I, oh, do you mean that after the jumps in the very beginning for this routine? Uh, in which case, no, it wouldn't be a straight up deduction, but it would be a T for text on my paper. And it would contribute at the end of the routine to my total deduction that I take for text and throughout. Um, I hope that answers that question, Sabrina. Um, and then Veronica, oh, good. <laughs> Too bad that you're not able to watch the videos through Zoom or how it kind of keeps skipping. It's a um, really unfortunate part of it all, but we're all making do with the 
what we can. So I'm glad that sending them in advance worked out well. Uh, that's definitely something that I'll keep doing. So that ends uh, the routines that we have for today. So if you have any questions that either we didn't get to or maybe that you didn't want to say in public, you're welcome to email me. I'm always happy to answer your questions. Um, I will be um, making sure that this is on the GBC YouTube page within the next couple of days. So either tomorrow, maybe on Monday, just because we're getting close to the weekend here and it's big files to upload. And then our next session is scheduled for next Thursday at 2 p.m. again. And this one is going to be a presentation style, um, so not a practice judging, basically. And it will be on unusual skills and connections. So it's a presentation that Bobby and I are working together on right now. Um, and we're basically trying to find some different ideas for different connections and skills and as judges what we would have to look for for those, um, of course, in the optional jail. And I believe that's it for today. So thank you very, very much for your participation and also your enthusiasm with judging. And again, don't hesitate to send us any uh, comments or questions or suggestions. Okay. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mamona. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.